The following is a rebroadcast of the Newark City Schools Board of Education's most recent general monthly meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order the Newark City School District Board of Education meeting on Monday, June 10th at 6.30 p.m. in the High School Media Center. Jeff, call the roll, please. Mr. Blind? Here. Mr. Bybee? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Mr. Harden? Here. Mrs. Nickham? Here. We have a quorum of five. Okay, now Mr. Bybee will lead us in the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Yeah, let's stand up. And uh, I, I just want to say a few words before we actually start the pledge. And, you know, I, I go back to June 1st, and uh, I think most of the people in this room are probably at the graduation celebration that we had on June 1st on Saturday. And, uh, my gosh, what a great crowd that we had there. What a great day. Uh, I don't know who was in charge of the weather. Doug, I don't know I if was, that was your I job, was. but uh, you're yeah. getting commended because we got that ceremony in uh, just before the rain started. But what a great day. Uh, we had nearly 300 kids, kids, young men and young women who graduated that day. And, uh, you know, who would ever, I'm sure they would have never thought 12 years ago what that day was going to be like. And, and I'm sure that their parents probably never thought about how quickly those 12 years would go. And uh, my, my gosh, it was just a great day. Uh, we had a great message from uh, Greg, Craig Baldwin and, uh, and Marsha Downs, um, local people here who uh, Greg uh, graduated from Newark High School and, and Marsha is so involved with the community. It was just great to hear them, both great messages. And, and then what great messages we had from our valedictorian and our salutatorian. Uh, both of them just great people and uh, you know, I. I I think I speak for everybody on the school board. This is, this is the celebration that really brings it home to us. Um, this is the payoff that we have. The, the, the ability to see such great people come across that stage and be able to wish every one of them good luck and, and good fortune as they go forward. Uh, it's just, it was just a great thing for me. So I, I hope you felt that way too if you were there. So let's say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dan. Okay, we got Okay, uh, we have a few special guests tonight before we get into special reports. I'll ask uh, now, in case you do not recognize him, Coach Noffs will be stepping up without a mustache. Uh, and you might want to tell him why you don't have a mustache tonight. Hi, um, I'm Randy Noffs, the cross country and track coach. And the boys made it to the state meet. And Anthony won the state championship and in the 800. And I went out on a limb. I knew it was a very good possibility of having to shave it. But the boys said, if he wins, will you shave it? And I said, yeah, we'll shave that thing off. So. So they didn't see it, but this morning I shaved it off, and everybody's been shocked. I just don't look in the mirror. Uh, 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 here are the boys that ran down there. Yeah, fellas, if you'd step up to the podium and say your name and what race you ran, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Cameron Carpenter. I ran the 4 by 8 that placed 11th at state meets, so I was third leg, if you guys were curious. I'm Anthony Johnson. Um, I ran the 800 and the 4x8. I got first in the 800, and I was second leg in the 4x8. Um, I'm Toby Hardwick, and um, I ran the 4x8. I was the first leg, and that's about it. <laughs> and Isaac Wheeler was our fourth leg, and his mother showed up. He was right behind him, but we have not seen him come in the door yet. So Isaac Wheeler doesn't need to be missed. Uh, absolutely. I want to Compliment uh, Coach Quackenbush and the athletic department, Coach Noffs. Uh, great uh, program, cross country and track, Randy. We really appreciate it. And then, you know, I, I, I want to mention why uh, uh, all three, Cameron and and uh, Toby, Toby and Anthony, uh, great leaders here at the high school. But I want I want to point out something, Toby. I didn't get a chance to tell you. You ran the uh, was it the mile in the regional final? Uh, something. Uh, Coach Quackenbush and Mr. Full and I were. We're standing uh, there along with some other Newark supporters, and and uh, somehow I don't know if you got bumped or uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Or rain, I, but you uh, you can see right below your lip you yeah. caught a few spikes and 
in in there and what but I know you didn't win the race and it's tough to win a mile when you get uh knocked down and and uh got back but what I was most impressed with was you got back up and uh you couldn't tell you got knocked down or or you had a strawberry on your leg from the track and uh that so uh that that kind of an attitude is you know take you much further than winning that race that night. I did want to mention that to you in the regional final but uh and then Anthony want will you hold your medal up please it's not often that we bring back a uh, state championship medal from uh, track meet. Let's give Anthony a hand. <laughs> and I, Anthony, I'll tell you this. Uh, I know Mr. Blind, board member uh, here in the middle, and, and Mr. Fullen and I were all in that first turn when you were running, and I don't understand why after the race we had sweat all over us and looked like we were we were pounding for you. You just looked like you're out for a little morning jog. So uh, I know age has something to do with it, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> But I, I, that was that was an awesome race. You went out and, and set the tone, didn't look back, and we're really proud of you. That, that's great. Thank you. So I promised them that we'd have them up front. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Running in. Okay. Just in time. Wrong library. Wrong library. Well, there's a few in town. <laughs> How about stepping up to the uh, the podium, tell them who you are, what uh, what leg you ran in the, you know. I'm Isaac Wheeler. I ran the anchor leg. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, Another good showing. Friday night, uh, uh, you know, it was, I don't know, a big blob of people probably from 6th to 12th or whatever. I didn't know what place you, you uh, got, but you 11th. I, I tweeted out you had ninth. so from my eye, you had ninth. so just say you got ninth. so. But, uh. And then Coach Boer, who's coached track here for many years, he called me yesterday and said that he thinks for Newark, we're not sure, we got to check all the archives, but we think that this is the first time anybody's actually won a running event. We've had other kids win a field event at the state meet, but we don't think anybody's ever won a running event at the state meet. So it's wow. it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Not only won it, if they put it in basketball terms, we won 80 to 55. It was never a game uh, after that first turn. So uh, neat, neat thing. Good deal, fellas. Uh, let's give them all a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Because once you're a wildcat, you're always a wildcat. Yes, we are. Yep. There you go. Thank you very much. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. All right, fellas. You're more than welcome to stick around if you want, or you can exciting door. More exciting than this. Okay, moving on to special reports. Doug, food service report. Okay. <clears throat> Technology is a wonderful thing when it works, right? There we go. Uh, we're required each year to uh, present a uh, report on on the Healthier, Hungry, Free Kids Act, and so uh, we can, we uh, don't have anybody here. We can't get the screen down tonight, so I'll just uh, report on uh, on December 13, 2010. President Obama signed in the Health, Hunger, Free Kids Act. It's had an impact on our food service in many ways, and not just Newark. This is throughout the country. All school meals served include milk, fruits, vegetables, proteins, and grains. There are stricter limits on saturated fat, calories, portion size. Each meal must have a full, or excuse me, a fruit or a vegetable. It can be challenge, challenging to follow the guidelines while giving students food they enjoy. And I, I would say mo most kids do not eat sweet potato fries at home these days, but they eat them here at school. Uh, so. Uh, Changes have required much increased paperwork. We must submit menus from each school level. Menus must list condiments, types of vegetables, portion size, calories, and saturated fat. We received an extra six cents per meal through uh, this program. New nutritional standards. Nutritional standards will increase during the 2014-15 school year. We must convert to 100% whole grain products and also limit sodium. It is important to follow all the guidelines and ensure our federal reimbursement, which allows us to run our cafeteria in the black, uh, that, that we receive that money. And it's about, uh, just for your knowledge, it's about $1.7 million, Jeff, yes. uh, dollars a year in, in uh, reimbursement. Federal lunch equity mandates require us to raise our lunch prices by $0.10 cents next year. So regular K-12 price will change to $2.45 with our deli or pizza meals set at $2.85. Parents may choose to pay cash, check, or online. 
our district website has a link to our online payment site under the lunch menus. So that's a, uh, a report on where we're at in the lunchroom. I think as the year went on, um, you know, people are starting to get used to it. And, and uh, the thought, uh, I did read some articles on it earlier in the year that at the high school and middle school and high school it impacts a little bit more because the kids are, are used to what they've been getting at, at school lunches. And the thought is, at least in the elementary, if they start eating these types of nutritional lunches, by the time they come up through, they'll, they'll be getting used to that. And so uh, I know that Mr. Carr and I ate one day out at Legend, had a good meal uh, a month ago or so. Uh, I think we hit it on a good day, nuggets, and I don't remember what That's else we had. Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was good. So uh, Potatoes and lima beans. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I always like to mention, uh, you know, I don't have the historical data on our lunch uh, program, but by operating in it, you know, we're not here to make money on our lunch program. Uh, but if we at least are even, uh, where we're not taking money out of our general funds, uh, then it allows us to use that, those funds on uh, classroom instruction. And so when you're feeding close to 4,500 lunches a day, 1,800 breakfast, if you can break even or be in the black, which we are and have been for a while, uh, obviously we don't know this year, but I think we're probably in, in pretty good shape from what we've seen. Uh, uh, so I do want to compliment our staff for that. Any questions about the food service report? I would only say one thing, Doug, in case somebody gets the idea that we're trying to make money to use it somewhere else in the school system. You cannot transfer money out of the cafeteria fund. It is there for one sole use. So there is no motivation for us to make money or make a profit on it beyond just trying to break even. Yeah, good point. Thanks, Mr. Anderson. Okay, we'll move on to uh, the... Uh, Extracurricular participation report. As we all know, the board suspended activity fees in the district a, a year ago. I want to compliment uh, Mr. Quackenbush for his research on that. Uh, we, we do not have, uh, and your leadership on that, Jeff, but we do not have the, uh, we had 27 uh, new students come in this year that participated. I think you could probably make an argument that the ones from Licking County that came in probably came in, uh, as they might have mentioned to Coach Quackenbush, that uh, there's no participation fees in the district, and they have kids participating. If you move from Colorado, which one young man did, I probably would say probably didn't move because of participation fee, I would venture to say. So uh, there are about 27 new new people, because we did talk about that uh, uh, when, when the board suspended that, because we are uh, a district in the minority of, of uh, uh, charging to participate in, in extras. And so you'll see on some of our numbers uh, uh, that I'm going to share with you tonight that participation really did go up. We have some sports, uh, you know, cheerleading, uh, basketball. I know in boys basketball, Jeff, through fundraisers, had always raised uh, enough money that uh, we didn't charge anybody through grade 7 and 12 to participate in basketball. So suspending that fee probably has nothing, uh, doesn't have anything to do with it. But there are some uh, sports, and, and I'll just go through a few, uh, that, that in, in the fall, middle school football, we were up 20 kids uh, this year. Uh, so uh, that's good. Sixth grade at Wilson uh, for uh, orchestra. Uh, the year previously, we had 15. We had 54 this year, uh, which is a, a huge jump. In the winter time, our wrestlers went from 9 to 19. Our swimmers went from 5 to 27. And I think there are sports like that and activities that definitely jumped by if Mr. Anderson here goes out for swimming and I'm his friend and he says, hey, come out and swim with me and I have to pay $160 or $60 or whatever it may be, I'm probably going to say no. Uh, but if it's free, and no charge, I'm probably going to say yes. I'm going to go to the first couple swim practices at 6 o'clock in the morning and say probably not for me. Just I don't know. Me, okay. okay, yeah. So uh, so the sports like that, it made a difference. The huge difference we saw was in track. Our high school track, the boys went from 25 to 41. <laughs> Girls went from 20 to 37. The middle school track went from 50 to 145. And so 
uh, when we talk about participation, uh, I think those numbers speak, uh, you know, volumes for what the board's doing and getting our, our students participating. Now, there were a few activities that we actually went down. I think bowling in the winter, we might have went down 10 students, but uh, we still have a, a good number out for bowling. And, and so uh, we'll keep these numbers and add to it next year and, and uh, really see. And again, we're, we're making a big charge with our staff to, to get uh, kids to participate. Uh, I know that I, I personally took 10 seniors around to the, the middle schools at the end of the year and spoke to, they spoke to the eighth graders. I was doing a microphone and asked them to speak to the eighth graders. Each of them spoke two or three minutes and then took questions for a while. And their common theme, unsolicited, was get involved. Get involved at the high school. I kept hearing that over and over and over with our graduating seniors. And, and uh, uh, so hopefully, and there were a lot of good questions about, it could be French club, could be the football team, uh, you know, different different activities at the high school. So I appreciate their time and and uh, the middle schools for having having us in to to get that common theme of get involved. So questions on the uh, uh, extracurricular report. When we <clears throat> when we originally decided to suspend that, we gave up basically one hundred and seventy thousand dollars that we collected in pay to participate fees each year. We said if we could get 30 new athletes to come to the d district, 30 new students to come to the district, that there would be a break even. And you said we had what, 27? Mm -hmm. So we only, we only yeah. came about 15,000 shy of what we would have if we'd been collecting pay to participate mm -hmm. fees. So as far as I'm concerned, from a treasurer standpoint, it was a good decision. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And again, I appreciate Mr. Quackenbush's Leadership with that, uh, Mr. Anderson's leadership and the board's uh, willing to do it, and then uh, our staff and most importantly our students for getting involved. So, good good thing. Yep. Okay, under the construction update, um, you know we're we're on the campus here. That uh, I'm starting to get a little excited. I seen uh, uh, the trench for the the uh, lighting package going out front. And I believe within the next month you will see a big change uh, with the paving package here. And we have a hundred and some doors going in here, correct, Dave? And again, I believe it's cheaper to buy a brand new door than take off the old door and restore it <coughs> in on our renovated project. So we're we're getting new doors, and and uh, it's tough to argue they don't make doors like they used to. Those are good old heavy wooden doors. So uh, that'll complete the high school package and pretty much complete. The hard part of our, uh, uh, not the difficult, the hard cost of our, our, our project here. And, you know, we've, we can't stress enough to how much we appreciate the community's uh, backing on this project and can't stress enough. Uh, I certainly wasn't here for the, the whole project, but I'm really thankful I was here for uh, the last four years of it. It's been a neat process, and I know probably nobody's more excited about this, this uh, being completed than Dave Altapeter and his group who have worked so hard to give us quality buildings and keep us in budget and build them on time. And then when you go over to Roosevelt, I was in Roosevelt this morning. They're starting to put some carpet upstairs. Uh, it's, it's starting to look like it's, uh, uh, it's going to happen and happen soon. Uh, really neat thing, uh, the terrazzo floor on the bottom floor, they started cleaning that and stripping that. And it's actually white underneath that. Yeah. So uh, probably hadn't been white for many, many years. Uh, so uh, good times over at Roosevelt, and they, they're, they're putting the water line in. The elevator was delivered last week, so they'll be putting that in. Those are the last two big projects they had. And there's a lot of cars over there, a lot of people working. And so it looks like, uh, you know, by the end of July, we're going to be in really good shape. Uh, we've been planning our move for quite some time. and. Uh, with LACA and ESC, and again, we're generating uh, $100,000 of rental income uh, and improving our space. So it's a win-win for all three organizations, a big win for the Newark City Schools. And so we're excited about that. So from a construction standpoint, um, that's where we're at. Hey, Doug, just yep. a question. On my way to the meeting this evening, I had a teeth-jarring mind out-of-body experience when I was going through the road here and hit one of these potholes is uh, when <laughs> when will we have that paid uh, 
The company should be in here if they're, I'm surprised they're not here now. Dave, you want to? They, uh, they are arriving now. Uh, some of their equipment is on site. Uh, and uh, they'll, they will commence, as Doug had indicated uh, earlier on, basically behind where food service is, the food service dock area or that area back near where the auxiliary gym pokes out the back of the Jimmy Allen gym on, on this side. Uh, they'll start there. They keep working their way around this east drive out around this way, and they'll finally finish then uh, behind uh, the auditorium or the cave building area uh, down there. Uh, so much of it then is, is weather related. Those guys, we really wanted them to be going, you know, great guns uh, uh, even last week, but like today, it really kind of throws a wrench into stuff. And again, weather related, tonight and tomorrow doesn't look real good. It, that, that's sure. what throws a curve in this whole thing. This piece is, is almost 100% weather related. If the weather's good, those guys will be out there just going at it. But if it's too wet, it really slows it down. Sure. So I expect, I can't put it in, frame it in terms of days or weeks, but that's the process. And eventually they'll get that around there to hopefully you won't, you know, uh, uh, by the middle of the summer, won't lose your car out here. As you know. Yeah, I, I was thinking, boy, this would be a good place to put a road here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I know all those things will happen. Then. Yeah. Yeah. To, but, you know, the, the, one of the neat things with uh, the parking is that we, we have more parking at the end of this than we did prior to it because yeah. we created a parking lot just west of the Jimmy Allen Gym parking area over there. Uh, if you remember, we had gravel down there that we – had, and since it was a parking lot, they paved that for us. And then this back area behind the uh, media area here and running down the back that, that uh, will be for staff and it won't be an access road for our community. It will not be an access road for our community. It will not be an access road for our community going back down through here. But we're, what, 20 to 30 parking spots for staff? Plus, plus, plus where each building once was yeah. will be additional. We'll be parking too. As well, as well as even out here. Yeah. Uh, that was added uh, during this yeah. process. Yeah, cross there. So, and 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 we appreciate the community's uh, patience with this project throughout the whole thing because there hasn't been a whole lot of visitor parking during the day up here, and and really out in front of the hub uh, should be for uh, visitors in our community. So that'll open back up to uh, to uh, that uh, in the school when the school year starts. So that's a good thing. So. So from a construction standpoint, that's that's where we're at. We're moving forward, and we're uh, you know really looking good. Technology update. Uh, just uh, spoke today with our technology <coughs> department. Uh, they're in the process right now of of replacing about 700 computers in the district on a replacement uh, deal, and some of those are from the technology budget, and some of those are from our curriculum budget. I believe more and Mindy we have from our curriculum budget we have about 214 or 15 laptops on carts uh, ordered that will be new and, and put out in our buildings uh, this year and so our tech department is really really on the ball this summer it's a busy time for them uh, so uh, f that's what we're doing uh, this summer with our, our technology questions on technology okay thank you okay. Doug now we'll move on to communication from the floor. Anyone wishing to address the board can approach the podium. Please give your name and address, and you may uh, speak for up to five minutes. Does anyone wish to address the board this evening? If not, we'll move on to uh, treasurer's recommendations. Jeff? Item 2A is approval of board meeting minutes. Recommended the minutes of the following board meeting be approved as shown in the appendix for May 13th, 2013 regular meeting. Item 2B is approval of May 2013 financial reports, including investments or interest earned in the amount of $4,860.66. Uh, our breakdown on our funds is general fund has $18.6 million. Bond retirement has $2.2 million. Permanent improvement is sitting at $2.4 million. Our building fund is $1.1 million. Food service is a million dollars even. OSFC project local, we have $120,000 there. OSFC project state share is 3.4 million. Classroom facilities, 2.3 million. Other miscellaneous, 1.1 million. 
which brings the total to $32.2 million, which reconciles with our bank account investments. Item 2C is acceptance of donation on behalf of Call to College from Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is doing a match for C.G. McKinney donation. Uh, McKinney's made a $2,500 donation, and Wells Fargo is matching that donation. Item 2D is authorization to disperse those same funds to a call to college after this meeting tomorrow. Item 2E is approval of change order form for renovations at the ASC. This is the, the change order of 65,763 is to hook up the water line and bring it across uh, State Route 13 over to the SC so we have enough pressure to run the uh, uh, fire extinguishing systems, sprinkler systems in the, in the Roosevelt building after the completed renovation. Uh, item 2F is approval of resolu resolution for renewal of an existing tax levy. This is the resolution determining to submit to the electors of the Newark City School District the question of renewing all of an existing tax levy pursuant to sections 5705.194 and 5705.197 of the revised code. This is the renewal of the 2009 property tax, emergency property tax levy that was passed in May of 2009. And if there's no other questions, I would appreciate approval of all these items. Do you have a motion to approve Treasurer's Recommendations 2, A through E? So moved. Second. Kurt is moved. Thomas, second. Any discussion? Am I not correct, Jeff, that on that change order we do have a verbal agreement with the city that they'll reimburse half of it? That's correct. There is a verbal gentleman's agreement that the city will reimburse half of that to the school district. Any other questions or discussion for Jeff? Not call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, superintendent's recommendations, Doug? Okay. Under personnel, we have some resignations today, and one you'll see under the addendum that uh, Nick Myers is resigning. No fear. You know, anybody, if you're watching this on Channel 19, don't fall off your chair or your couch and say, he's too good to lose. He'll be back. He's be back with us here in a couple seconds. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we appreciate uh, the staff that, that is leaving uh, their commitment to the district. Some are leaving uh, for other opportunities, and, uh, and we appreciate what they've uh, done. Under appointments and assignments down here, we have, and I'm just going to mention that, uh, over the past three to four years, uh, we're, we're replacing over 20% of our staff. It's been a big challenge for the district um, because we, we lost some really good teachers uh, through retirements and, and whatnot, particularly with the uh, buyout and the STRS changes. And so we lost some really good ones. Our challenge, uh, led by Barbara Quackenbush, uh, our personnel director, was to go out and find some good kids. We really think that each year, and this group we're bringing in now, our, our group is really, really high on, uh, is a, we're, we're really replacing our good people with a lot of good young people. And so, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 we chat a little bit. Uh, we're probably, we probably have 15 to 20 positions yet, but we have a great pool of people out there. And uh, Newark's a good place to be. Uh, New York City School is a good place to be, and so we've got a lot of young kids headed our way uh, simply because uh, the word's out that uh, we're in nice new buildings. Our uh, achievement scores are on the rise. Uh, Nick's shaking his head. You're a great place to grow professionally, Nick, would tell you that, and, uh, and, and f we're fiscally stable, and I think the word's out there because, uh, you know, uh, that's nice to say when you're recruiting kids to come. So. So we have some of those, uh, I was going to say students, you're not really a student anymore, some of you are, you, you're finally getting a job, it's almost there. I'll, I'll keep you waiting a little bit longer. But as I go down through here, I believe some of, some of you are, we have uh, uh, Darren Athey, is it Athey, Barb? Darren Athey? Darren's not here, but Morgan Christ is, correct? Would you stand up, Morgan, and be embarrassed so the board can see uh, who you are. Morgan will be teaching kindergarten at uh, Carson 
Elementary, and you're from? I'm from Nashport. Nashport, so in the neighborhood here. We have Emily Drake uh, with us today, who's from Granville, mm -hmm. and Emily will be teaching second grade at McGuffey. Yeah. Welcome. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, with us today Angela Lamp, who, Angela, please stand. Some of you may recognize she's going to be teaching kindergarten at, at Carson. And we spoke a little bit about leadership and, and, uh, and uh, you know, that's an inter integral part of that building and a very uh, important part of, of that building. So Angela is not new to us. She's been subbing for a few years for us. And uh, so welcome, Angela. Uh, Angela comes to us. She will not be participating in the mentor program because you've already been there and done that, right? Yeah. And then we have Emily Morgan who will be fifth grade at Legend, standing back there. Emily's from Sheridan, who j you were in Heath and you just moved into Newark, correct? Yeah. Yes, and we're really happy to have you. So uh, some of the new teachers that are, are here, and I'd share with the board that we're, we have interviews the rest of this week, um, and we've got a good pool that uh, we're working uh, from, and so uh, by the June 26th special board meeting, we'll have some more names for you, and. And, and go from there and so let's let's get another group like the ones we're hiring tonight and and we'll be uh, really happy the addendum on there now Nick's back with us so get back up off the floor and sit in your chair uh, Nick Myers is a poster child for what we strive for here Nick was a a uh, choral teacher in the district and uh, became a mentor uh, uh, supervising director and that and now Nick will be the new Dean of Students at Liberty back where he was teaching uh, before and great young leader here I really look for good leadership out of Nick so uh, uh, thank you Nick for uh, your leadership in the district item four: supplemental contracts and uh, we do have an addendum uh, one of the addendums on the supplemental which is Whitney Bobo we've tried to um, Barbara that's true. We had a lot of conversations about we need to get these people hired uh, late spring, early summer, and get all of our supplementals worked out. And you can tell by page one through 50 on here uh, that there are a lot of supplemental positions, some athletic supplementals and some building supplementals. And so I will not read that whole list, but uh, you can see the supplemental positions. I'm sure you've reviewed them. Uh, salary uh, and position adjustments. Uh, there's a list there. Um, you can see that Nick's on there and Todd King's also on there who he's switching with. Um, substitutes, uh, a list of uh, the, the aides, bus drivers, custodians, food service, uh, and secretarial. And then under other approval of public notice, 8A, um, we have it's recommended the Board of Education approve running a public notice for the purpose of advertising a public hearing to receive input on the issue of rehiring Jeff Petrie, who will be retired from the Newark City Schools in, uh, and would like to be rehired in the same position, which is a school psychologist. So items one through eight. I have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendations 3A, one through eight, including the addendum. So moved. Second. Dan is moved. Tim is second. Any questions or discussion? I did want to mention all these supplementals with the buildings, the personnel committee, which is Tim and me, did sit down with Barb Quackenbush and have reviewed any changes, any new ones, and taken a good look at them rather than just, they don't just show up. Yep. Thanks for mentioning that, Tom. Yeah, I would add to that, under Barb's leadership, the personnel committee has been working very hard the last few years to get all that lined up and appropriate and more even throughout the buildings thank you Barb and I'm not sure of the of the interview committee for the the, the new teachers but uh, my guess that that's a pretty arduous process uh, when we're dealing with the numbers that we've dealt with over the last few years to see the quality of the people we brought into the district and the quality of the people that we see before us tonight uh, well that, that's an excellent job it really is and it's it's a tough job it's very time-consuming I don't know how many interviews that you would have conducted to fill one spot. I don't know, maybe multiple interviews, I don't know. But yeah. Well, yeah. It's, 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 it's evident that it's paying off and you know, we can never be too careful about the teachers that we bring into the district because that's how important they are to, to, our, uh, to our students. So, uh, so thank you. It's, and I will say, it's, it's a uh, 
great effort by our team because uh, you know we, we start identifying openings uh, you know way back in January and February and know who's retiring and and that and then uh, I know that our special ed directors have helped in the interviews our curriculum directors have helped uh, Barb uh, go out uh, and we actually go out to colleges and universities and and uh, they spend the whole day and and uh, just meet with over and over and then they get a little color system color coded system and to the ones that Barb wants to bring back and uh, so you know I see Maura and Mindy and and Linda and Jean sitting back here and and uh, actually you know, had I, I, I haven't got asked to go out yet, so maybe next year I'll get asked to. So I can say, no thanks, you guys take care of that. But, uh, but it is a good process, and uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, then, then we come back and we bring them in to the principals or, or the special education directors and, and move forward that way. So if you get to this point, uh, you've impressed some people, uh, and, and uh, th that's good. And, and, you know, I, I've yet to be. Uh, really disappointed in the last uh, few years on, on who we've hired. We've hired some, one, again, we've lost and we respect the people that retired. They did a wonderful job here. They're good people, good teachers, good staff members. Uh, but uh, the, the new group we have coming in have just, uh, you know, it's a new wave of people and we, we expect, uh, I'll be in with them in August in the mentor program talking to them about becoming leaders and uh, the old order of saying, well, I've taught 25 years, so you have to do what I say till you have taught 25 years, and everybody, well, that's gone. And uh, our, our young people are offering a lot to our staff uh, uh, in leadership roles, so good stuff. And I will add that we challenge the principals in the personnel department. The board set the challenge out there that since the buyout, we want all these people with 30 years experience replaced with people with zero years experience and with few exceptions we've met that challenge and I and I've been really impressed because you worry when you're taking a 30-year teacher and replacing them with a zero experience teacher but we're getting quality candidates and we're giving quality mentoring um, mentoring um, seminars with them and the buildings are really embracing these new teachers and I've been really impressed with all the new teachers and the camaraderie and the family that we have going with the buildings between the veteran teachers and the um, zero experience teachers. I mean it's really been, it's exceeded my expectations. And Jeff would have to help me on that when Bev is talking about because we we soon forget that over an eight year period it's going to save us over seven million dollars you know from a budgetary standpoint. So if you can save money and, and improve yourself uh, that's good stuff. And again, you know, I, I, you know, we talk to people about coming to Newark, and I, I, I tease Nick about being a poster child. But if we're doing our job right. Uh, and I told Nick this: we're doing our job right here. We shouldn't have to hire leaders outside of our district. They're right here within our district if we allow them to grow and take advantage of what what we have. And so, uh, not to say that we won't ever do that, but uh, so it's good stuff. So, good things going on in Newark City Schools. Any other questions or discussion on personnel? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, I would ask under B that we look at items one through five first uh, and a vote there. And the only item we have is 2A, to recommend the board of uh, board approve agreements with the following school districts to provide special education service to the Newark students during the 2012-2013 school year as shown in appendix and that's Eagle Wings Academy. I have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendations B 1 through 5. So moved. Tom is moved. Do I have a second? Second. Tim is second. Any discussion? Call the roll please Jeff. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Under item 6A, it is the recommendation the board approve the corrected middle school fees for the 2013-14 school year as shown in your appendix. I have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendation 6A. So moved. Kurt is moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dan. Any discussion? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. 
And item 6B, revised school calendar. The Board of Education is asked to approve the revised 2013 13 2014 school calendar this revision includes waiver days as shown in the appendix I, I would mention with the waiver days we could we could not apply uh, ODE didn't have anything up till a week ago Friday and so they have 45 days since the time that Mindy submitted uh, the request to approve and they usually take that 45 days uh, and and, and uh, so we do not have those approved uh, yet this is just in case they approve them then we can get that uh, calendar out to our our parents uh, as soon as we can to have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendation six sorry six B so moved Dan is moved sorry. Tom is second any discussion or questions you mean I had a question about and to clarify graduation is before the last day of school next no, yes, we we have not asked the board to approve the graduation date, but tentatively we're looking at uh, May 31st and uh, next year, which would be prior to the June 2nd. Uh, or I thought I had a copy of the calendar with me. And also, how many waiver days? That's the waiver days. That's four waiver days. Years. Yep. Yeah. Last, last day for students next year is June 3rd. Okay. But if the waiver days are approved, it would be June 2nd, student day. Because so. June 3rd would be the, the fourth waiver day. Right. Okay. Yeah. We, you know, I think with uh, the uh, uh, graduation, is that we, we'd like to do that on uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, to allow families to have visitors from out of town that usually come in that time but that's the weekend prior to that next year uh, we could make that day by requirement of the seniors but uh, that's still a week earlier than we normally would have would do that so um, and do we have topics selected yet for the waiver days yeah waiver day one uh, basically we're at the, the state's mercy in terms of data that we receive back from testing this year's testing. We used to get that stuff back the middle of June, then it was the end of June, then it was middle of July, and then it was end of July. And then recently it's been uh, as far as, it's been as far as, uh, um, you know, middle of August. And our, our thought with that waiver day is, uh, which would be this year, I think it was August 31st. Um, the thought with the waiver day is that we offer teachers a chance to come in August 6th, uh, start to plan for you look at your data, uh, you start analyzing, okay, here's my list of students this year, um, here is uh, their scores from last year, and I can start my, my analyzation of their data. I can also start, and we work in teams uh, to provide interventions and and uh, those type of things in August so it, it allows us to get off to a, a quick start uh, a better start than, than in the past because you know a lot of times schools they get data and they give it to their teachers and say here's your data and then they move on and they don't take the time to set up intervention and plans for teams and, and individuals uh, students uh, that way uh, the um, the last waiver day would be May 23rd, which is before Memorial Day. So that, but the 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 two, the the second uh, waiver day, is designed uh, to to look at where you're at and and you know may you may need to reorganize your plan with kids and and your teams and you know it's basically set up in a period of time where you you know hey how's it going where do we need to go so you're you're kind of evaluating the second and, the, and the, the third waiver day. The fourth waiver day is the one that that uh, I like the best. Uh, you know, and I and I share this with people. I've I've got a great uh, job in that I, I get to go watch a kindergarten teach teacher teach, and I could be watching a senior government teacher teach 20 minutes later. And one of the things that I know is we've got some great teaching going on in our buildings, and so we ask our teachers. It started in the third one. 
uh, where I kind of skipped over that. We did a lot of technology stuff in, in the third one where we had our, our technology uh, academy here at the high school. But the last one we, we did was uh, Mindy and, and Maura scheduled our teachers into three sessions uh, during the day. And the high school and middle school were up at the high school here and the elementary was over at uh, Legend, all the elementary schools. And so it allowed us to get all of our staff together <coughs> who ordinarily wouldn't have that opportunity. And teachers taught teachers. And we put it at the end so that uh, Aaron Steinball sitting here would, you know, if you do that to her in August, Aaron's going to say, I already have my year planned. I don't think I can do that. So we wanted to do it at the end of the year, and we challenged our staff to say, watch some people and see what they're doing in their classrooms. Now now Aaron has the summer to think about, well, I and I did hear a, a lot of that stuff. Well, I think I could probably do that. And uh, some great great teaching and, and it was it was awesome because teachers can teach in front of 500 kids during the day and they don't get any splotches on their neck but when you have them teach in front of their peers that's a little bit different they get a little fear you know going on that but man I saw some tremendous uh, sessions uh, and so uh, uh, you know with the third grade reading guarantee this year the common core uh, OTES, which is evaluation system, our technology initiatives, it just allowed us to, to, to do that. And I'm not saying that every year I'm, I'm for all four. It worked out, uh, four days worked out for us uh, this year. One of them, as, as the rain runs down through here, 20% of our staff has to go to stormwater uh, credit uh, training during, during that day uh, for us to, to get some reimbursements uh, that we get. Um, you know, one, one of the areas that I would tell you, uh, you know, and I'm in charge of, of, of staff and personnel and professional development and the, the whole deal, we haven't done a very good job here with our uh, classified staff and including them in our trainings, and, and that's where we'll step it up uh, next year. Uh, and so, you know, and that, that's, that's, that's my fault because we haven't really concentrated on that. So uh, we will be stepping that up. But, uh, you know, for, and, and I do realize, uh, and and it, it's an, a point that we make. If we're asking families to change their day and our students aren't in their classroom, then it's got to be meaningful and it's got to be a full day. And we try to, to make sure our staff doesn't go away from the building. We to eat lunch. We had training downtown today and our principals went to eat. And we wanted them back at, at 1. And, and Ellen was the only one back at 1. She's a rule follower. So, uh, but but they, they kind of trickle in then a little bit. So we try not to... We try to have food for them here at lunch and, and make it a meaningful day. And, and, uh, and I understand uh, the inconvenience it puts on some families, but, you know, I, I believe uh, that uh, one of the best things that we've done since I've been here is, is our professional development. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not saying it has to be four days every year. Uh, you know, from that standpoint, I'm not even, if you approve these now, uh, I like that first and, and last for sure, and and uh, you know those two are are two on on my mind that uh, we need to keep, and and uh, you know with all the new initiatives, we just we just feel like uh, you know keeping kids home a day is a, a big thing to do, but that time I think our instruction's better because of it when our it's more quality instruction when our when our students are here. So, yeah, Doug, it might be beneficial either before the waiver days or right after each one that if we get some information either what is going to go on or what did go on because I think any time that you have a schedule change and an inconvenience as parents we hear about it from a few people and mm -hmm. it would be nice if we could just say well the teachers did such and such and we think that's real important stuff as it is we're just like well you know they, they're doing some things that are beneficial but we don't know what it is Absolutely. Time. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, Maura and Mindy just went through the evaluations, uh, so they can they can share those with the board. Uh, they were very positive from a very tough group to to please, and teachers are are hard to please. And uh, I know I, I heard some comments. Boy, I wasn't sure, but that was good stuff. Uh, so you know, I heard a lot of positive, and and so I, I think uh, I'm confident to tell you this past one at least 90 to 95 percent of teachers were extremely happy uh, with the last one and so yeah we 
we can easily do that. It would just help us answer questions that I think we all get. Sure. And the problem I have with this is comes really flows from as a parent. Um, um, and I Doug, you and I have gone back and forth a little bit today. Um, basically, we have nine late arrivals in the year. We have uh, the OEA day. We have parent two parent teacher exchange days. Um, we then have three days of of development and each of those days and each of those times are time away from the classroom and away from teaching. I'm not opposed to training, I'm a huge advocate of training. Um, but there's a point at which you have to say, okay, well we have time with, uh, and for lack of a better term, I'm gonna say the customer and we have training time. And so I supported the waiver days last, uh, last time and, and I, I can't bring myself to support four days of training. I'd, I'd be willing to talk about uh, uh, some other days, but given the context of the all of the other time that we have, I mean it almost seems as a parent as though barely a week goes by that you don't have something going on. I know that's not true. I know it's not barely, it's not a week, but it's a couple times a month that we have uh, shortened uh, school week and we have late arrival and, and my kids love to hear from Seth. They love to hear the recording <laughs> from Seth, but uh -huh. um, I don't like hearing from the parents who say, you know, we really need to be in school uh, teaching the kids. So I, I, so I guess that's my objection to this. And uh, yeah. I, I certainly understand that. Any other questions or discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? No. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, item C is the approval to change the boundary lines to John Clem, a spot uh, boundary change, and, and which basically uh, uh, we showed last month that's on our website. And uh, it's a little triangle from English Avenue uh, north on 13. Um, that and, and uh, so our process, you know, we showed, shared with the board uh, last month uh, our issue <coughs> and a solution. We also went out to, to uh, John Clem and invited parents and were, um, I suppose we probably had 50 or so, maybe a little bit more uh, people in the library that night. Heard, you know, some good comments uh, from both sides. I've met with a few parents uh, in my office uh, on the transfers, not necessarily the boundary change, but the transfers. And the best thing I, I can do, I have 100% confidence in all our schools. All of our buildings are good buildings, and, and we don't have an argument there. I didn't hear an argument with, with parents that way. Uh, a lot of it is a, a convenience thing on on uh, babysitter or preschool that, or, uh, uh, that delivers to John Clement. And we understand all those type of things. Um, and, the, and the thing that I offer each parent and each child that, that uh, is no longer at Clem and going to another building, one of the other six buildings, is that the Newark City Schools will do anything that we can to make our children feel comfortable. And, and we say, if you want to visit Hillview Elementary 20 times, you're going to visit Hillview Elementary 20 times. And I'll look at Ellen Cooper and say, Ellen, if somebody wants to visit your building 15 times, Ellen's shaking her head, yes, come on in. We'll meet the teacher. Uh, we'll do whatever we can to make our children feel comfortable. And I, I, I'll tell you, I used to tell people, the hardest thing I ever had to do is when I was coaching basketball is, is to cut a child. That just tore me up. Well, this is a difficult thing for me to do too because I understand comfort levels of children and we don't want to take them out of there. But I also know too that kids adapt very well. And, uh, and we have some good buildings. Uh, I believe they'll be fine. And again, we will do whatever we can to make our, our uh, families and our our children feel comfortable so. so so Doug the biggest issue that you heard from from parents was was more or less a convenience type issue as opposed to a quality of uh, it's it's where my babysitters at and who delivers to John Clem and and those type of things and and the people I met with were transfers they were not uh, you know spot uh, and and I and I do compliment I think we had a very productive very constructive meeting at John Clem that night there were a, a lot of good points and uh, as an example one parent mentioned could these kids go in the same classroom at Hillview to make so they had some familiar and that's something that I'd be very honest with I hadn't thought about well sure if that's what they they want to do well you know uh, 
I know uh, Barbara is instructed, she's sitting there in the front row ready to push that Peg Dunlap uh, uh, wants to know uh, tonight if she has students coming her way and she's going to be, you know, putting a plan into place for uh, those students that will go out to, to Hillview. And so uh, that, that was the majority of it. Okay. I think the other thing that was mentioned several times was um, students that have IEPs and just don't make change real well. And again, they were assured that the folks that deal with their IEPs and the folks that will be their teachers will do everything possible to, to make those kids comfortable. Yeah, I actually uh, spoke with a grandparent over the weekend whose uh, grandchild has visited Hillview twice uh, since that meeting and is actually very excited to be going to Hillview if this is passed tonight. So I think, you know, it just it was kind of a comfort level. Mm -hmm for some of the children, the concerns of their comfort. Well, well, I'll have to admit, I did get one phone call from a, from a parent, and I got what I call unfiltered feedback, and, <laughs> and you get that, but uh, it, it wasn't over an issue dealing with quality of education in the schools. It was more a, a convenience item like we thought. Yeah. Any other? Uh, and, and something I'd add is if you really want to talk about the quality of education, you, we have to address the problem of the overcrowding at John Clem. And that's really what this is about, sure. is, yeah. is getting those students where, where they're not going to be overcrowded. Because I, I speak as a parent of a John Clem student, and it's just way too many students there. So. And a parent and whose children used to go to Miller right. <laughs> and got yeah. moved. You know, I, I yeah. do, and I, and I keep mentioning this, and I want to mention it again tonight. If you were on the redistricting committee, which was made up of uh, employees and community members, uh, did a wonderful job. We were talking, you know, we're five, six years in, into that, and this is the first little tweak we've had to make to the plan. And if you think about that, that's, that's pretty doggone good. So happened before I got here, and so we appreciate uh, everybody that served on that committee because you're just making – that one little tweak, you know, years later like this, it's, you know, the boundaries are set pretty good, so that's good. Those who read the dispatch probably saw a story, I think it was a week ago Sunday, that it doesn't always go that smooth. Right. Yeah. Any other exactly. questions or discussion? Call the roll, please, Jeff. I need a motion and second first. So move. Uh, motion second. second. There we go. Thanks for keeping an eye on me, Jeff. That was, Kurt was the motion. <laughs> After the discussion, right away. Right. Tom, Tom was second. second. Okay. Gotcha. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. And then as always, every month we're blessed with uh, gifts. Uh, tonight we have the gift of, from Linen Rental from uh, Buckeye Linen of $761.73 for the Junior ROTC Awards Banquet. And some of us were in there that night. Uh, what a wonderful banquet they had. The commons area was packed, and we appreciate uh, those linens made, made it uh, uh, a nice little touch in, in there. So thank you very much for that. Do have a motion to approve Superintendent's Recommendation C, gifts? So moved. Dan is moved. Do have a second? Second. Thomas, second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. And then under D, business, the contracted service for uh, the professional design services, Leggett and King Scott. Um, Dave, do you want to kind of share what, what that's for? Well, there were essentially, during this whole process, some additional services that Leggett and King Scott performed for us that really was not accounted for in, at the very beginning in, in the master plan. And some of it even was a wrap up of what we were doing uh, you know, here on, on this campus as we completed the whole essentially 10 year long project. Uh, they had to do some additional work uh, uh, to put some final plans and spec specifications and so on, different things like that together. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Under item five, approval of contracts for nursing services. Uh, the board's asked to approve third-party contracts with Licking County Health Department 
basically, uh, this is uh, Blessed Sacrament St. Francis. These are uh, state auxiliary service funds that are administered by the district and uh, kind of a pass through. Uh, also, under B, recommend the Board of Education approve the contract as shown in appendix with Catapult Learning to provide instructional services in reading and math at Blessed Sacrament. Newark is the fiscal agent for this contract through auxiliary funds. So those last two are both auxiliary funds. Do you have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendations? D, business one through five. So moved. Second. Kurt has moved to him in second. Any discussion or questions? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. And now, uh, adoption of board policies it is recommended that the Board of Education adopt the policies listed below as shown in the appendix and as announced at the May 13, 2013 meeting of the Board of Education, file 2431, Interscholastic Athletics. To have a motion to adopt this policy. So moved. Dan is moved. Second. Kurt is second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Now we'll have board discussion. We'll start down there with Tim. Well, it was neat to see the young men from the uh, track team here. Uh, pretty pretty amazing group of young men. But if you noticed, those of you who are here, uh, Anthony almost seemed embarrassed to have to display his medal. The humility that he shows is pretty neat stuff. It'll serve him well all his life. Uh, congratulations to them and Randy Knopfs. Um, it was a great time to be a Wildcat. Uh, a few Saturdays ago when we were at the White's Field, uh, getting to shake the hands of, of almost 300 graduates as they came through. Uh, it's one of the coolest parts of this job is to see those kids step off there excited, um, ready to go, and it's a pretty neat thing. So uh, great time to be a Wildcat. I pass. I wanted to mention one thing that we sort of quietly did was um, approve putting the levy renewal on the ballot and we've said it before, we're going to keep saying it. People need to remember that this was a five-year emergency levy that was passed in 09. Tim and I were here at the time. I think we're the only ones still here. <laughs> and we were saying at the time we thought this would last three to four years and we'd need additional money. And here we are four years later not asking for additional money. We're just asking to keep this money flowing. And looking at our projections that Jeff has done, it looks like we're going to be in that shape for a few more years. So I think people need to take a look at how well the district has handled their finances. I'd like to welcome the new staff people. You know, it's, I'm sure it's, especially for those of you that this is a first job, it's exciting, scary, all the other emotions. Um, but I think you'll find it's an exciting time to be in Newark schools, that we have so many things headed in the right direction. And a lot of that's coming from these new young staff people that we're getting. And, and I just wanted to say welcome. Um, Tim mentioned Anthony Johnson. I was over there and watched, watched this guy run this race. For those of you not familiar with track, the 800 is a two-lap race. And Doug and Mark Full and I were sitting there, and Anthony came around at the end of the first lap, leading by 30 yards probably. I think one of us said we could almost win at this point, as far ahead as he is. Not quite, but I didn't mention that, Tom. I don't think I kind of, somebody would have caught me. <laughs> somebody would have caught me. And you know, and here's a young man that didn't even start running that race until mid-season and won the state and had the best time in the state uh, this year. And that says quite a bit about his athletic ability. But I think it's also important to note that, you know, as someone starts performing at that level, you start hearing little rumors about them outside of their athletic stuff. And everything I've heard about Anthony is what a good kid he is. He probably wouldn't like the word kid, but that's okay. And I think that's very indicative of the the type of people Newark Schools is putting out right now. And I just think he's someone that we can be extremely proud of, and he should be proud. You know, he did seem embarrassed, but 
he'll he'll realize at some point what an accomplishment that was. You got to get old before you realize you did something good. Um, and the only other thing I want to mention, everybody out there, Tim's millions of viewers that he always mentions, school's out now, kids are out on the sidewalks, on the streets. They don't always look out, so please drive carefully. I, I want to welcome the new teachers as well. Uh, I know you did, <laughs> and, but that's okay. Uh, I, I just want to welcome you to our district. Um, yeah, you are special people. You just didn't walk into this job. Uh, it's, it's a very competitive process out there just getting a job. I, I know what the job situation is like out there trying to get newly hired, but, but you're special people because in, in the process somewhere along the line, you displayed the leadership that we're looking for. And, uh, you know, Doug said it well, you know, we're looking to hire leaders. Uh, we're not looking so much for people to come in and tend to their positions over the years. My gosh, I've seen people that work for organizations for 30 years, but they seem to have one year experience 30 times. And that's just not what we're looking for. We're looking for people who provide leadership and not tend to the position. And again, we're so anxious to have you come and join us because you'll be part of a team that will produce some great results through the students that we put through our district. You know, our valedictorian uh, at, at her message uh, on June 1st, a couple of statistics that she mentioned kind of resonated with me to show you that the excellence that you can be part of as these kids accomplish uh, what, they're, what they're doing. Uh, our, our senior class this year qualified for close to $3 million in scholarships. And that's pretty substantial. That, that's amazing. Three million dollars. And uh, I, I think another statistic that she mentioned was this senior class is uh, the, the, the people in that class are going to be attending over 40 universities, 40 different universities all over the country. And, and the fact that we had one individual that qualified for not only one military academy but two military academies is just extraordinary. And as new teachers, you can own a piece of that by providing the leadership that we're asking you to do. So welcome to our district, and I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, you get uh, uh, all the assistance that you need as you launch your career and that uh, you will enjoy your time with us as well. Thank you, Dan. Down to Jeff. Mr. Blind mentioned the tax uh, renewal levy that we were asking the board to put on the ballot for November. I want to say it is a renewal, a renewal, a renewal. That's the first thing. Second thing, if there's anybody out there that's listening to this broadcast and that they doubt where the money has gone, please come to my office. I will sit with you for minutes, hours, whatever it takes to convince you that this board and this administration has managed their money as wisely as possible. I invite you wholeheartedly. Please come talk to me. Do not listen to the gossip. Do not listen to rumors. If you want facts, I will show you my books. I will open the books for this school district and prove to you that the money has been managed well. And please, please reward the students of this district by passing that levy in November. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Tim, down at the other end, he's talking about it's a great time to be a cat. And, you know, I even tweeted out at the state uh, track meet, I love being a cat. But in reality, I ask all of our people here, and I'll ask our board, because I think you need to do this, and our staff members, our students, community, take a step back here in early June and take a breath of, of uh, air, because August will be here before we know it. And so you know, this is the time of year I talk to our people. Take a step back. Get away from Newark City Schools a little bit. Get that out of your head uh, somewhat, and, and then reflect back, too. And I do that. I step back and I look. I, I love being a wildcat, and it's a great time to be a cat. But what I really love is being part of a team. And that team is our community, our students, our staff. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a great place to be. I know that I reflect back over my, my four years uh, here in Newark, and I've grown so much professionally. And I love being part of a team that's allowed me to do that. And uh, I, I hope I continue to. To grow and I get up every morning and and uh, love my job I love coming uh, uh, working for our kids because as uh, uh, Kurt mentioned earlier you know that's our customer I believe that 
that's our customers, our, our, our students. And, and we've got a lot of very uh, good people. I had a chance to stroll down to the gym here uh, prior to the, the meeting, and I always find my way to a gym in a school. And we've got kids in sixth grade they are going to be in seventh grade playing in the summer league. And I'm watching, and boy, we've got some kids coming, good, good kids. But I just sat and I and I watched a little bit. Uh, I watched the kids come through the door, and I watched our head basketball coach and athletic director. I think he he took off. I don't know if he's sitting back there still, but I watched him shake each one of their hands uh, as they came through the door. And that, that, that's just that's great leadership by by uh, Jeff. I watched a coach uh, who was coaching these kids stand and instruct these kids in a very positive. Uh, way, but then I watched our kids who were sitting, you know, six or seven of them all, uh, weren't playing at the time, uh, cheering their their uh, uh, peers on and and uh, behaving themselves and, and sitting engaged in the game. And I just kind of looked around at a beautiful facility and great kids and a great environment. And and uh, that's that's part of what I'm talking about as a part of a team. So I love being part of the cat team. Thank you, Doug. Uh, to see uh, Anthony, Toby, Isaac, and Cameron go to this state and achieve what they did um, just tickles me. I've followed the career of these four young men in cross country and track since they were eighth grade, and they've always worked hard, um, even in middle school, at what they do on the track and off the track. And so it was just a real treat to see what they accomplished over the weekend, and congratulations to them. Again, graduation is the best part of being on the school board it is the graduation ceremony and uh, many, many great leaders. And, you know, it was the kind of, I mean, it, graduation is always bittersweet, but this year it really was. Uh, we said goodbye to a lot, a lot of great leaders. And so I'm really excited to see, you know, five, ten years down the road when they come back to Newark and, and raise their families and work in Newark. It's going to be really exciting to see what they accomplish. Um, as as adults and so another great school year and uh, the new one will be here before we know it so enjoy your summer and with that I'll take a motion for adjournment so move Tom. and I will Tom. point out we outlasted the rain we talked long enough that it quit <laughs> if you need to call the roll or do the eyes Mr. Carr yes Mr. Blind yes Mr. Bybee yes Mr. Harden yes Mrs. Nickham Yes, meeting adjourned.